Good to go? Cool. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Salesforce CPQ, three hacks to extend the CPQ platform session. My name is Max Rudman. I am a uh, vice president in the Salesforce Quote to Cash product organization, which is part of Sales Cloud. And here with me, I have uh, Matt Seeger, who uh, heads one of our solution engineering teams. And since Salesforce is a publicly traded company, I must show you this friendly reminder from the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to make your purchasing decisions based on currently available functionality. And uh, I'm going to do a quick poll here before we begin. Uh, how many of you know what CPQ or what the cash is or are familiar with it in general? Oh, look at that. Fertile ground. And just a quick uh, poll. How many of you are ISVs, so making apps on the Salesforce platform? OK, a few. How many are consultants? OK. And how many work for companies who are Salesforce customers? admin developers. All right, so, so it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good mix. Great. So, uh, so I won't spend much time on, on um, kind of what CPQ is and what Quota Cash is, except to say that um, today's presentation is focused more on CPQ, and it is a part of what we call Quota Cash, which is Salesforce CPQ and billing together. So we won't cover billing today, maybe next year. But so when I say CPQ, I really kind of use them interchangeably. I mean the whole the whole shebang, which to us is CPQ plus billing, quote the cash. And um, so I guess what I want you to walk away um, with from this slide is just the, the massive opportunity that there is for all of us collectively uh, as a product team, you as our partners. Uh, there is, we have, I'm not supposed to say this, but I will. We have close to 1,500 customers, which is more than any other CPQ vendor um, in the world, we believe. But Salesforce has close to 200,000 customers. And granted, not every one of them needs quote to cash necessarily, but a good chunk of them do. So if you do the math, and I'll do it for you, if you don't feel like it, it's about 2% penetration, 1-2%. So there's the other 98% who, um, who could use, maybe not all of them, but even if only half of them could, could use a, a CPQ or, or a billing system, that's a big opportunity for all of us. And so in order to execute on that vision, and uh, we're, we're building what we're calling an extendable quote, the cash platform. So think of it as a platform on top of platform, right? Salesforce is the core platform. This is a quote, the cash platform on top of that. And so there's a few components to it, uh, which enable you to build apps either as you know, ISVs or as internal developers to build apps on the platform. Uh, one is the data model. Uh, we use a lot of the standard objects from the, uh, a lot of the objects from the standard Salesforce data model already. But now that we're part of Salesforce, and how many of you know we came through an acquisition, so uh, many of uh, so now that we're part of Salesforce, we're actually influencing the core data model. Um, so, you know, you, I think you'll see some elements of our core cash data model start to show up in in the core data model, which leads to increased interoperability with other Salesforce products and, and third-party apps. Um, the next one we'll cover today: uh, plugins and APIs. So that, frankly, is what makes us a platform. You can extend. Uh, certain parts of it, you can plug in your own custom logic, or you can connect it to third-party systems and build custom UIs on top of it using the APIs. And so we'll, we'll talk more about that in the session. Um, so Lightning components, I think you guys have all heard about Lightning. Um, obviously, it's a brand new kind of look and feel of Salesforce, but it's also the next generation modern component-based UI framework. And the vision here is really to sort of, an, you know, what I think would be a game changer in enterprise customizability. Um, the, the vision is to sh componentize our UI and sort of ship it as a set of fine-grained lightning components that you can, that admins can assemble into sort of custom UIs with drag and drop tools like Lightning App Builder, and developers can provide either extend standard components or provide custom components and kind of mix it all together for to to, to build you know, an awesome um, sales rep experience or user experience. Um, and all of that, 
you know, in order to really kind of bring all that to life, you know, we are building sort of what we're calling the vibrant partner ecosystem. So whether you're an ISV, a consultant, or an in-house developer, we want you to learn about these tools, uh, give us feedback on what you need, and um, we'd like you to be building on this platform. And so to that end, let's talk about um, three hacks to extend the Quota Cash platform. And this is good hacking. We're not suggesting you write malware on the platform. So the first one is leveraging the APIs to either build a custom portal or an e-commerce site or connect to some third-party e-commerce platform to drive revenue across channels. Hack two is to brew your own configurator to maybe leverage existing investments in, in custom configurator that your company may have, or at least the logic that sits behind it, you know, or if you're an ISV with, with um, some deep expertise in configuration for a particular industry or whatnot, uh, being able to integrate that and replace the C and CPQ, if you will. And hack three is to extend CPQ with plugins. Uh, we have a bunch of them. We'll cover three of them today and actually give you some use cases. Um, but obviously, we want you to run with it. So hack one, CPQ APIs with a custom portal. Um, so there's basically four categories of APIs. Uh, there's a quote API that allows you to create, uh, manipulate, and calculate a quote slash shopping cart. Uh, there is a product API that uh, you can use to search and load complex product configurations. The configuration API that you can use to programmatically apply product rules and validate that a particular configuration is correct. And finally, the contract API, which you use to uh, generate, amend, and renew recurring subscription contracts. So this pretty much covers the full kind of end-to-end -end spectrum of our functionality. And the idea is that you can, you can invoke the same, it's really the same engine that our own UI calls. Uh, you can invoke it programmatically. And so uh, what Matt's gonna show you is, um, is I'm gonna show you next is this custom portal um, or e-commerce site that's actually built off Salesforce platform. Um, and you can do this on platform, you can do this on communities, or you can do it off platform. This particular app is built on Heroku, but obviously the platform is your choice. Um, and the goal here is to, to do omni-channel commerce with seamless handoff, right? So the customer could start uh, product configuration and then sort of leave it to the internal rep to complete the transaction. Um, and all of that is off, and really this is the, the, the reason behind it, is all off of a single product and pricing uh, master that uh, applies across channels. So whether you're an internal rep or you know, um, a channel partner or an end user, you're all working off the same most current product and pricing information and um, subject to the same rules. All right, Matt, take it away. All right, thanks, Max. So what we're looking at here, as Max mentioned, is a Heroku-based e-commerce website, um, the underlying components of which are all off of the platform, as Max mentioned, but it is leveraging pieces of CPQ that are going to make the lives easier for people who need to maintain everything. We're specifically leveraging two of the APIs here. One is the product API, and one is the configuration API. So that same product catalog that your own internal sales reps may be selling in their day-to-day and business-to-business worlds can be exposed on a third-party site um, using the product API, and we'll see that right here. I'm gonna drill over to Rhino's product landing page here, and all this underlying data that we're gonna see load through on trade show Wi-Fi um, at blazing fast speeds um, is all being fed from the Salesforce CPQ product master. So we'll see the exact same product catalog, the subset of which that we allow to expose on the e-commerce site will be exposed here. So all the machines they sell, all the accessories and anything else can be pushed through in an unauthenticated way to an e-commerce user, so leveraging the same product catalog. You'll notice that some of the items in here actually have a build it button next to them. This will actually select that product and allow us to use the next API that we're gonna talk about, which is the configuration API, which is this skid steer, for instance, is not a simple product. It comes with a lot of different options, but you can allow your end users to now self-serve and pass along more qualified leads to your sales team 
by using the same exact configuration rules. So not only are you providing a better end user experience for your customers, but you're also lowering the amount of maintenance you need to do because the exact same rule set that CPQ is providing to your internal sales rep is now available through the API so anybody out there can leverage it. So in this case, you'll see that I can pick between multiple cabin options here. There's another component of the configuration API that's telling me that I can actually only choose a maximum of one item here that's detail that's sent back in the config API so I can render it as a radio button rather than a checklist and I can go on and on through all the other options. Once I choose the configuration I like, I can actually enter in my information here. You can watch me type a little bit, but once I enter this in, Sam's Builders, Chicago, Illinois, I can now pass a more qualified quote along to my internal rep to pick up on the Salesforce side. So not only when I log back into Salesforce will I have a quote sitting there, all that information we've captured can be pushed in as well. And we have a quote sitting there with the configuration they've requested on the website where an internal rep may further refine it, make changes, offer different pricing, but also going to be able to uh, expedite the sales cycle by having a better idea of what your customers want after they've submitted it from online. So I'll turn it back over to you, Max. Great, awesome, thanks Matt. So there's a lot of demand for this by the way. Um, you know, we're seeing in the marketplace, so I think there's a lot of opportunity to do everything from, like I said, custom bolts on the community all the way to connecting it to third party um, e-commerce platforms. All right, so uh, next is uh, our hack number two. Uh, it's brew your own configurator. So, um, so why would you want to do this? Well, we obviously have built configuration capabilities in Salesforce CPQ that are quite robust, but it doesn't do it. Um, you know, and so for example, you know, if you're a big industrial manufacturer like GE or ABB, the kind of configuration you're doing you know, is, is very complex, very heavy volume of, of the bombs are you know, thousands of line items long, there's gazillion rules. So um, there are tools that are better suited for that, and you'll see some of those in the demonstration. Some of our partners build an integration with Salesforce CPQ where you know, they basically replace the C with their own. Uh, and then get to leverage all the rest of our product in terms of um, in terms of quoting and approvals and being native on Salesforce and working seamlessly with Sales Cloud. Another use case that I've seen a lot is um, a lot of companies have big investments in internal configurators. And frankly, in a lot of cases, it's like some guy wrote it like 20 years ago, like nobody knows what it does now, and so you really can't kind of rebuild it almost. So you sort of use it. So how do you, what do you do then? Well, the very same mechanism that our partners use to um, provide, to extend our product to specific industries like industrial manufacturing, is the very same mechanism you can use to connect it to your custom in-house configurator to sort of provide the logic and even the UI, and then you can sort of seamlessly pass the data back into Salesforce. Um, so the use case is render a custom configuration UI and it's on by product basis. So some products uh, can continue to be configured inside of Salesforce CPQ, and others basically punch out to an external configurator. Um, determine, you as a developer can determine how much of the bomb do you want to surface up to Salesforce CPQ and how much you want to kind of keep behind the scenes. And, and also this gives you a way to do real-time product visualization. So as I'm configuring a product, I can sort of see a real-time picture of what it looks like, and you'll see that in, uh, in the demonstration. Uh, so the demo is just that. It's an uh, industrial manufacturer with very complex configuration requirements. There's probably some back-end integration requirements around the SAP. Right? A lot of manufacturers use SAP, so maybe pulling the product master and maybe even consuming some of the rules from, from an external configurator. Some of our partners do that. Uh, and of course, the real-time visualization to show you the product that's being configured. And I'll turn it back over to Matt to show you what that might look like. All right, thanks, Max. So as we mentioned, there is a external configuration uh, component of this that allows you to not only surface simple products through Salesforce CPQ, um, expand upon that, build uh, slightly more complex products using the out-of-the-box Salesforce CPU functionality. But you can also flag specific 
products in here to be externally configured. So that might mean build your own on whatever platform you'd like or leverage one of our partners. The key thing here though is an end user, the experience is exactly the same to me. So I don't need to know, jump to this tool for this product, add normal products through the quoting tool. They're all gonna look exactly the same to me. So from this opportunity for a track loader, I'm gonna drill into my quote and browse the product catalog. Some of those items are just simple CPQ items that I can add to my quote, but you'll also see an external configuration that's run through one of our partners. This one happens to be KB Max, but you could of course build your own, use any other partner out there, or leverage an existing tool that you already have in house that manages your product rules and expose it to your users through the same user interface. So my product has no quotes on it at this moment. I'm gonna go through and browse the product catalog and you can see I have a vast array of things. Actually, every single thing in here is managed to the CPQ product catalog except for one thing. It's gonna be my track loader. I'm gonna go ahead and search for that product. It comes up just like any other product in the search would, but when I go and select it, the tool knows that this is an item that is externally configured and you'll see a modal window pop up. This is the Salesforce CPQ external configuration capability that allows any other tool to um, provide the anything really, but the view layer and handle complex things. In this case, we'll see um, the reason this one exists is for a visualization, which will be loading here in just a moment, but you'll be able to select um, any items from here and that tool would return then the bomb to Salesforce CPQ where you can carry through the remainder of the sales process, pricing it, approving it, quoting it, just as you would any other product in your catalog. So unfortunately, I don't think my uh, visualizations are gonna load here, they're coming. Um, but here now, much more complex than the standard Salesforce CPQ configurator would look like. You can put anything in here. So in this case, I have a rich uh, visualization requirement that is gonna allow me to not only see what this tractor is going to look like as I change the items that are in there, I can also come in and animate it. So this is great for companies that have really um, engineered to order, manufactured things that are done in CAD. Many of these tools actually take CAD drawings to where I can animate this object, see what it's gonna look like. If it needs to um, you know, be lifted, I can step inside the cabin and do it from there. So any type of configuration requirement that's not handled by CPQ out of the box is no longer a limit. You can brew your own configurator or bring in a partner to do so for you. Um, let's just select one more option. So uh, we know we want this particular item to be pink as I move forward. Coming back, we'll see my tractor is now pink and I can go ahead and save this to where the tool now pulls in the bomb from the external configurator or the one you built yourself and your reps are none the wiser to whatever tool they're using. Now I can quote this right alongside the items that are in my normal Salesforce CPQ product catalog or configured more simply through Salesforce CPQ and using the same now rule set to do anything else like pricing approvals, et cetera. So Max, I will turn it back over to you. Awesome. And of course, if any of these products have you know, recurring services like warranty maintenance, which is not uncommon, right, then there's still a lot of value to be consumed from kind of downstream processes that we support, such as renewals and um, order, order management. All right, so last but not least is Hack3. It's extending CPQ with plugins. So we showed you how you extend it with functionality that's sort of largely off-platform or at least kind of replacing the UI. Now, what if you just want to tweak a particular aspect of, of the product, um, less about UI, more about kind of the, the business logic and how it works? Well, fret not, we have um, what we call plugins. Uh, plugins are the extension points within the product that the product understands and supports. So these are all backwards compatible, obviously, with new releases. And it basically allows you to provide an Apex class or a JavaScript piece of code that conforms to a certain interface and the product calls into it, passes you data structures that you can operate on, and then it picks up processing from there. Um, so there's a few of them. We're gonna cover these three. One is the product search plugin to allow you to execute complex product search and guided selling logic. So the product selector that Matt showed, maybe you want to do some crazy things there, you can. Um, another one is the custom section. So we obviously generate the proposal or the quote document for you. That's the queue in CPQ. But, and there's a lot of flexibility and dynamic rendering capabilities, but maybe you want to do something that's not supported out of the box as uh, we're going to show you next. That's, you can do that with the custom document sections. And last but not least is the page security plugin for programmatic control over field visibility and editability in quote line editor, which is our UI for building a quotation. So um, 
here's the use case we're going to show you. So the product search plugin, it's uh, sorting most recently purchased products first in the product selector. So dynamic how uh, the products sort based on the account and the purchase history. Um, for, the, for the custom document sections, I want to display a side-by-side -side comparison of products or additions. And then for the security plugin, it's dynamically showing uh, a cost field based on authorized user, but also you can do that based on the record, right? So we, in the product, throughout the product, we respect the standard platform security mechanisms, including field level security. But field level security allows you to show height, make fields read only based on the user. It doesn't allow you to do it based on the record. And so this is where, if you want to do the latter, this is where we use a plugin. And then uh, turn it back over to Matt again to show you what that might look like. All right, thanks, Max. So the first thing we're going to walk through is the product search results plugin. So um, Salesforce CPQ ships with a lot of things out of the box, and when people hear out of the box or the word box in general, means I, they think it means I must fit inside that box. It feels limiting. These plugins exist to address that exact issue. So in the case Max mentioned, we are going to change the search results that the normal CPQ product would give us. In the case we're doing right here is I'm a high volume business, I'm selling little widgets, and whenever I do a search result, I wanna filter any items that this customer's ever purchased in the past up to the top, because those are the items that they most likely wanna order again. So I'm gonna look at this company here first, Cogswell Cogs, and I'm gonna take a quick roll down their account, and we're gonna see that they've actually done some business with us before. We can see they've ordered some bolts back in February and May, They've got some assets on here for a whole bunch of different type of aluminum bolts they've ordered from two orders they did, one in February uh, and one in May. I've got a new quote here for a June bolt order that I'm supposed to close by the end of the week here, and I'm gonna go in and search for some new bolts for them as I go through the, the product search. So I'll add some products to my quote. I'm just gonna come up to the search and say I wanna look for some bolts. And they're gonna come back to me. Notice that those aluminum bolts that they've ordered before on the third and the fifth are surfacing up to the top of the search results page. And then as we continue scrolling down, we can see the rest of the product catalog comes in as well. We've got some more aluminum bolts, some titanium bolts, et cetera. Maybe on this particular um, quote, they're asking for uh, a handful of bolts, bolts they've never ordered before. But in industries where it's very high volume, you're taking orders over the phone, people are saying, just give me the thing I ordered last time. You can leverage the product search plugin to reshape anything in this uh, result set and filter anything up to the users, making their lives much easier. Uh, I'm gonna, not going to move forward with this quote for Cogswell. What I'm going to actually do is come back to my list of accounts and move over to this industrial automation account. I've got a quote on this particular account as well that I'm also supposed to close by Friday, but this customer has never done any business with us before. So if I come into their quote and begin searching the product catalog here, I'm gonna do the exact same search I did for Cogswell, but this time I'm gonna enter Bolt and we'll see that the results that come back are actually not sorted in the same way as they were for Cogswell. In fact, I'm getting aluminum bolts, titanium bolts, all in a different order. So this plugin can be used to not only reach to other areas in the platform like we did here, looking back at their previous orders, but it's also very useful if you need to make any type of integration to a back office system, checking things like inventory or lead times on certain items, because that may affect what type of search results you might want somebody to add to their quote. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these three bolts to add to this quote for industrial automation. We're gonna move over to the next plugin that we're covering in this hack which is going to be the custom document template section. So again, the Salesforce CPQ product ships with a lot of out-of-the-box functionality for the quote templates, but again, the word box is in there. You might have a very unique requirement that just isn't covered out of the box, but there is the ability to create a custom section where you have carte blanche to use all of the tools available on the platform to design your own custom sections that'll be rendered seamlessly into the Salesforce CPQ document template. And in this case, the one we've built out is to allow product comparisons for things you're quoting. So I'm actually gonna select all three of these aluminum bolts. They're all different sizes, different threads, and things like that. And saying, on the document that I render, I wanna have a side-by-side -side comparison of these so when my customer sees it, they can specifically see all these things side-by-side -side on, on what we're gonna be presenting to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate my document here. 
And these things are very nice because they render in line with the standard out of the box functionality too. So just because you need to go custom in a little area doesn't mean you need to go custom end to end in these document templates. So as my template uh, loads up here, we're gonna see the you know, a first section of a cover page, which is generated by the out-of-the-box CPQ functionality, a cover letter. We'll see the custom section, which is a small part of one page. It'll have a side-by-side -side comparison in there, and as well as all the commercial details of this quote, how much everything costs and, and whatnot. So here's my um, quote that I put together for industrial automation. Again, this is just a standard out-of-the-box component of the document. Here's a cover letter. And then as we get to the actual products that we're offering, we'll see this little area that's kind of a... Uh, got the table in there with the blue left column, is actually a custom section. I asked the product object for all this additional information, which isn't available to the quote. I've laid it out in a way that's not supported out of the box, but I'm still able to include it in line in this document with all the other things that come out of the box, such as how do we present the pricing, how do we generate the terms and conditions that go along with this, and even the same document that I might integrate off to with an e-signature tool. So that was the second plugin we wanted to cover here. The final one is going to be the page security plugin, which is really, really powerful. So Salesforce gives you a real good security model out of the box, field level security. You can use sharing to restrict access to records and things like that. But within the world of quoting, there are even more use cases where you might need to hide something on a very specific basis. Maybe when I'm selling product A, I can see a cost field, but when I'm selling product B, I cannot see it. There are certain things you wouldn't be able to handle in there. That's where you would implement the page security plugin. So right now, notice I'm logged into somebody named Sammy Salesperson. I'm gonna go look at that same quote that I just put together with the handful of bolts on it for um, in industry automation or whatever it is. And notice I'm only available, are only able to see costs for one of these items here, item two on here, the titanium bolt. The cost of this item is 27 cents, but the page security plugin is restricting my visibility to very specific components of the UI. In this case, you can control whether it's visible, whether a user can edit it. And in this case, I'm not able to even see the cost for two of these fields. And this can be done with any component on this page or any other page within CPQ. Now what I'm gonna do is switch over to another browser where I'm logged in as a different user. I'm logged in as an admin user. I'm gonna go look at that exact same quote that I just pulled together, which is gonna be quote 36. Should have those same exact items on there, the three bolts that I had added. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the exact same line item set that Sammy salesperson was seeing, but now that I'm logged in as a different user, there's a custom field on the user object that says this user is able to see all costs. Notice all the costs for those items are now showing to me in this column right here. And this is leveraging the page security plugin. So anywhere within CPQ that you might wanna get down to the individual field level and implement any array of logic, not just is your profile this, anything you can imagine that you could write up in Apex code can be used to modify who can do what and interact with certain fields or whether they can see anything at all as they're quoting. So Max, I will turn it back over to you. Great, awesome, Matt, thanks. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do is um, do a quick Q&A. So if you guys have questions, Pete, of course. Okay, so when you're given the demo for on the external site for a customer, they created their own quote and it saved. Where does that lead or, um, you know, you put in, you know, your name, address, so forth. Quotes, I'm used to being on an opportunity, save to an account contact. So where does that information actually get stored? Is it a lead attached to a quote or is it, do you create an account at the same time? It's actually, it How is a quote. Work? Yeah, and I think probably the difference since you maybe last worked with the product is we now, we don't require opportunities now, so you can have quotes that are just attached to accounts or nothing at all. So it would just be kind of sitting there um, for the rep to pick up and then they can attach it to an opportunity or an account. And that information that you put on the web page, does that stored in the quote itself? In this, in this case, it was an orphan quote where that information was entered in on the quote, but because that was a third party product, it doesn't dictate anything about how it needs to work. You can go in and create an account that all e-commerce leads come onto and all quotes hang off of there. In this case, it was just, as simple as taking the information entered from the web page, putting that on the quote with the configuration that was entered online, but because it's off platform, really world's your oyster at that point, you can you know, make the information work however you'd like. Cool, great question. Anyone else? Up front. Do you have any guidance on um, 
between using the legacy pricing plugin calculator versus the newer one that uses JavaScript? Use the newer one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, any, any reason why? Uh, well, legacy, as the name suggests, is probably going to be deprecated at some point. Yeah. So I may just add more color to it. So yeah, we've been journey to kind of transition to a more client-side architecture, kind of away from Apex. Um, and so, I mean, there's still some Apex in the, you know, in the background, or kind of data, data access layer, if you will. But all the logic, all the UI is in, is in the client now, and so that's where, that's where these plugins run, so. Um, when you say the plugins, right, the paid security plugin, or whether it be um, you know, the generating the document, so are they native to Salesforce or third-party plugins? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you last part. So are those the native Salesforce features or the third-party plugins you're using? Well, we're part of Salesforce, so yes. Um, I mean, I, I'm not sure what you mean by native. Um, it's not kind of part of force.com platform. It's not like triggers or visual force. They're specific to our product. OK, specific, but not the third-party managed packages, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Um, I have two questions, if I can ask them. Um, the first question is one of my customers want us to, so when you click on calculate on your edit lines page, they want us to do the same thing, but programmatically, uh, will the APIs or the plugins you just mentioned help us with that? Uh, to do calculation? Yeah. Yes, there's a method to run calculation on a quote, yep. Okay, the next question is the APIs where you showed us the products or building quotes are there any limits that are associated that we need to pay attention to? Um, well, it's subject to the same constraints as, as the native UI, so there's no limit specific to the APIs. I, I had a question. I'm sorry. So for non-standard pricing and approvals, do we have plugins? How, how do they fit in all this? Yeah, there's one plugin that I actually had in the slide I didn't mention it, so it's a quote calculator plugin, so that's where you can overwrite standard pricing calculations, and you can make call-outs to, um, to third-party pricing systems or execute a custom logic. I think that's what you're asking me, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe a little more detail. Yeah. Yeah, hi. And uh, regarding this page security plugin, how does it look in the back end? Where is it actually configured? Um, it's configured, so I don't want really to get into too much details. Um, it's, it's configured in settings in our product, and it runs on the line editor page where you build the quote. So again, these, these plugins are part of our product. They're not sort of standard Salesforce platform features. I have a quick follow-up to the first question. We need to be able to provide our customers with a way to make selections based on a nearly finished quote. And so we need to be able to provide them with a link that they click on, and then they can say, I want option one or option two. What's the best way to do that, APIs? Um, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, because these options that you choose, um, well, I mean, frankly, it depends on what kind of that means. So, uh, you know, we have we have um, this optional checkbox on the on the quote product, which determines whether it's you know added to the forecast or not. So, at the very basic level, it could be just as simple as setting the checkbox from one line to another. So that you can frankly do with a standard Salesforce API. But if you want to enable them to select a different option that wasn't on the quote before and you need to, like a, a literally a different product that's not on the quote yet, then that may obviously run afoul of configuration rules or have pricing rules applied to it. So in that case, you'd want to use the API. Yeah, if it's just simply between switching between optional and non-optional, that you can just do that with it. It's just a checkbox, up, it's just a record update. And the same would be true about selecting it in an or fashion. You must select one or the other. Well, that's where the rules come in. So if you have that kind of constraint where it's one or the other, a rep wouldn't be able to add it, both of them to the quote. So they would have option A, and now if you want to give a customer to switch to option B, then they would essentially need to reconfigure the quote. So in that case, you would want to use the APIs because that's the only way to kind of run that configuration logic programmatically. Um, is there any interest um, 
kind of to do to leverage kind of the app builder so like you can include uh, lightning components into the edit line screen or include the edit line screen in an existing page? Yeah, there's a lot of interest, and that's something I hope I obviously didn't do a good job communicating that. But so the light components piece was all about that, right? We don't we don't have a lot of ways for you to modify the UI right now, um, aside from the external configurator. You know, it's all sort of controlled with field sets. You know, if you want to do more on the screen, it's really your only option is kind of re rebuild the UI from scratch and use the APIs. So the vision behind finding the great lightning component is exactly that to kind of break up the give you more access to the standard standard UI to override it in this place or assemble your own page when and click tools. You bet. Uh, you mentioned about the e-signature plugins. So how does it being used in your process or how the, what features it provides? It's what it does is it installs a button. So I don't know if you so Matt showed you generating documents. So there's a button to preview, save and email. So if you have a plugin for your signatures installed, it puts another button on the thing, send with whatever. And so we have free built integrations with DocuSign and EchoSign, but any e-signature vendor can go implement this plugin and build an integration with their e-signature service. Anyone else? All right. In our business, we have projects that sometimes get multiple quotes and they have different components. Um, sometimes they're controls and sometimes they're materials. And I'm wondering if there's any way besides programmatically through the Apex to go and combine those quotes, not into one lump quote, but to say all these quotes relate to this one finalized agreed upon project. Um, I mean, there's, we don't really, when you say relate, do you mean is it just a lookup or what, what, what do you mean by relate to the project? Basically, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it's populating a lookup, I would say, I mean, there's nothing out that kind of a declarative way to do that. Okay. You know, you would have to write a trigger, right? But at, but at that okay. point, it's really just standard Salesforce platform well, yeah. capabilities, right? I'm trigger. Wondered. <laughs> Um, if I wanted to build a POC for a client, um, um, how can I install the, the package so that I have access to everything? Because uh, I'm seeing different versions of the, like the pricing editions. Um, is, uh, is there a way to have the, the latest uh, and fullest uh, package? Yeah, so, so I think the question is, I think you've already heard it, right? How do you get access to it? So um, it sort of depends a little bit on who you are. If you're an ISV and you're in the Salesforce Partner Program, you have a Partner Account Manager and the TE, so those, people, those guys are enabled. They know where to get it, so they'll be able to get you the latest version of the package. Um, if you're a services consulting partner, then we have a guy in our team whose job it is to manage the partnership, so he'll get you access to the product. Easy question for you. Um, where's a list of the available plugins? How do we find what's um, So how are we doing on time? Uh, we've probably got time for one more question. But OK, uh, I'll, we'll do one more question. Last slide has, um, well, there's the last slide. But, but I'll take one more question. I have one more in case, okay. unless somebody else has another one. Um, but uh, how does licensing work with the build your own configurator if that's exposed to the customer? versus a Salesforce CPQ license is necessary for a sales rep internally to build out. You'll negotiate it commercially with the Salesforce sales rep. Got it, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we, don't, we don't break out, we don't price by component. So whether you use CPQ or P&Q, the price is the same. Obviously, that could be a consideration during the commercial negotiations, but we don't price by module, so it kind of doesn't matter. And um, well, so um, I think to wrap up, um, I want to thank you all for coming here, and hopefully you guys are all excited, as excited about the platform vision as I am. I think there's a lot of opportunity for you to build your businesses on if you're an entrepreneur or a consultant, or take your careers to the next level if you're sort of in-house admin or developer. And any more questions, visit us. There's a community site on community.steelbrick.com, I think still. 
And obviously also at, on Trailhead, we have, some, we have some trails, I believe, right, Annie? So, and when in doubt, get in touch with your friendly partner manager or an account executive, and we'll, uh, we'll get you answers, get your questions answered. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming.